Hello, let's chat a little bit here about universal akasha and in relation to an intermediate stage on the path where surrender at uh, deeper and deeper levels can contribute to a type of uh, uh, quite <laughs> existential pain. And this arises from two things. Well, firstly, we have a type of practice where uh, that is preceding this. And when we're engaged in this type of practice, there is a type of excitement, there's a joy, there is a, an identity that has attached to many, many uh, high astral tendencies uh, or deified, uh, in a sense, astral identities in the light in relation to the path. And this is what has spurred us on. So up to this point, the invigorating an enlivening factor and the pull to continue on the spiritual path has been created through a type of identity. Now, as we continue with this process of surrendering, unifying with more and more refined uh, energies and, and light and more and more refined substance on the path, what happens is the very identity which has spurred us on, which has initiated our interest in and pursuit along the spiritual path, this part of us dissolves, it disappears. And the result of this is a type of purposelessness, a type of nihilistic, what's even the point of it all. Now, navigating this can be very tricky because typically, Previous to this particular release, we've been able to find uh, solace and inspiration in a, a, a disciplined returning to the practice, right? You do your practice, you get back into it, it uh, invigorates you, and boom, you're off to the races again. However, at this stage, it can be very, very difficult to return to the practice. Suddenly, the identity of that particular density of discipline is no longer present. That part of you has been surrendered, which means that the type of exploration changes drastically, right? We now have to engage from a far deeper place of non-identity. The type of joy, the type of excitement, this all has to evolve. It's constantly in need of evolution. Now, in the absence of finding this more refined type of inspiration, this more refined nature of inspiration, then we're left in this quagmire of essentially just, it's just a pit of non-inspiration, non-excitement. There's no connection to the spiritual path anymore. Now, that connection still exists. It is only obscured because the way in which we have related to it, all the forms and densities of different identities through which have been uh, doorways for us to relate to these higher aspects of spirit, those no longer exist, so we don't know how to get there. Where's the door? And there is a door. We just have to continue and f allow for this evolution to foster a new connection. So, how is this related to universal Akasha? Well, anyone who has spent time opening the doors to universal Akasha will very often find uh, on the other side of uh, those deep practice days a type of purposelessness, a fatigue that goes far beyond the body. And this fatigue, this is due to the dissolution of path, the dissolution of the forms of purpose itself. And this is such a deep, 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 smooth type of akasha that all of these forms that we've used up to this point to motivate us on the path disappear. And this is why prior to engaging in any universal akashic type practices, it's very, very beneficial to have a strong relationship with more specific type of 
Akashic streams, an emptiness that lies underneath a particular path of exploration and evolution, because then the type of emptiness is still within a type of container and a type of trajectory. So trajectory is important. We need to have a strong relationship with universal light. We need to have a, an ability to tap into that because that will re, um, reform us and give direction to this whole thing that exists here on the other side of the deepest of surrenders, on the other side of the deepest of dissolutions through universal type Akashas. So developing a resiliency to Akashic exploration it can be a real <laughs> existential pain. And we want to work through this in a safe way that doesn't leave us uh, in a total absence of, of purpose and just, um, <laughs> you know, kind of it reminds me of a dog in a in a little whirlpool, like a, a little hot tub, just, and it's just going in circles. And we don't want to get stuck in that element of the, the quagmire that can uh, overcome us there. So things to be interested in, things to be aware of. And when you are finding yourself in these places of, of a non-purpose, where you have dissolved the very will that has taken you to this point, that identity can no longer take us further, which means that this idea of, oh, I will be as I was, and that's the path forward. No, uh, that will hold us back, but this is a process that we have to go through. And it's very difficult to practice through these types of uh, stages, to practice through them, uh, because the part of us that's practicing through uh, that can no longer be a part of the process because it doesn't exist anymore. So uh, rest and allow for a new relationship and a new doorway to start to open. And from here, greater and greater perspective can start to arise as this light starts to shine through a different type of door. All right, hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments. Um, that's it for me. Oh yeah, workshop coming up mid-November if you're interested in training and in uh, really tapping into the universal light and all the preceding stages that help us access that with more and more clarity and integrity, please uh, check out the link on the website. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.